Hey, onliners. Three of you already? Man. Of course, I might be one of them. Yeah. Mine too. Yeah, he might have the same school, but about five years after that. Same school. Same school. Yeah, Doug beat him up worse than I did. That's a long story. We had a good time. And bumps are. <laughs> Sorry if I hurt you guys in your visual thing. If you're like seasick now. Or about some movie series. Probably talking about Star Wars. If I know Charlie. Alright, we're going to get started. There's a couple people still coming in. <laughs> Security events update. Mm. The liberal Democrat and Rhino Republican efforts to replace you. That's the current events update tonight. Uh, how um, joyous. They're, uh, it's very important for the Rhino, real Americans, Rhino. to understand what's going on with this thing here that's in the news. This is just one way in which. There's an effort to replace you, and here's how it works. <clears throat> they take the census, and if they don't ask the question, are you a citizen, then they just count heads, and then that means that places that invite illegals have more people, therefore they get more representation in Congress, which means that mm. with all the Democrats that constantly talk about how you're disenfranchising a voter by making them show an ID. You know, that's a lie. So this is good then? No, this well, is this good. is good. The yeah. justices seem ready to okay asking the citizenship question. We don't know, we don't know for sure though. This is guest, guest work here. We'll only know when they release their decision. And it's a it's a crazy thing because there's cer there's several things and what will happen is people say well how does this happen? That's how it happens. How does Roe v. Wade legalize abortion? That's the kind of stuff that was being pulled behind the scenes and people weren't paying attention and they didn't have good sources to even pay attention back then for the most part. And so that's how it happened. See Eisenhower and Nixon put justices on the Supreme Court and no one knew what he was doing and what either one of them were doing and they were under the influence of some elites with money and the rank and file Christians in America had no idea what was going on and that's how you got abortion. It wasn't voted. Congress didn't pass a law. It happened with this stuff behind the scenes. Um, it the story says from the AP, despite evidence that millions of Hispanics and immigrants could go uncounted. See, there's your lie. They, it, it's not immigrants. It's illegal. It's illegal immigrants. See, the Associated Press a are a bunch of liars. Mm -hmm. You just saw a lie reported by the Associated Press. Yep. Despite evidence that millions of Hispanics no. If they're citizens, not a problem. And immigrants, no. Illegal immigrants. Illegal aliens. They're not even immigrants. That's right. Could go uncounted. The Supreme Court's conservative majority seemed ready Tuesday to uphold the Trump administration's plan to inquire about U.S. citizenship on the 2020 census, which is what the census is for. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, gonna make it do what it does. There appeared to be a clear divide between the court's liberal and conservative justices. You think? <laughs> That's because conservatives go by the Constitution. Liberals are liars. Yes. Liberals do not go by the Constitution. 
You have a liberal in the pulpit of a church, he will rip the Bible to shreds. You have a liberal on the court, he will rip the Constitution to shreds. And that's what's going on. So uh, the left is attempting this in order to destroy the republic and enter the new world order. You need to understand liberals want an end to the Constitution. They want an end to you. They want to replace every Bible-believing voter in this country, and they want to replace all the conservatives, even if they're not Christians. And they want to replace you with, like Bernie and these leftist nutcases in the Democratic Party uh, <coughs> uh, campaign that, for president right now. They're all advocating letting murderers and rapists in prison vote. Think about that. You know why that is? Because the Democrat Party is so filthy, stinking wicked that they need the most wicked people in our country to vote to get their wicked policies enacted. So they can give money to Planned Parenthood, chop babies into pieces, and sell their body parts. That's the Democrat Party. And it's just amazing. We've got a Nazi party in this country called the Democrat Party. And they then want to turn and call Trump and Republicans Nazis. Why? Because that, they're liars. That's how they function. They have the spirit of Satan, serpentine spirit in them. And they are getting ready for their Christ, the false Christ, the Antichrist, and they're ready for the new world order. They're ready. This is... Douglas Letter is a lawyer representing the House of Representatives, and he don't tell you this, but controlled by the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi. He said the census is critically important to the House, listen to this, which apportions its seats among the states based on the results. Bingo. He wants it to be apportioned with foreigners to replace you but he telling the truth right there. He told you the truth. This is critically important for the House, which apportions its seats among the states based on the results. The last time we had a consensus, they gave additional seats to places like California, took away a seat from Ohio because of illegals. You in Ohio, we were disenfranchised yeah. by the census the last time. Because the lying, filthy, wicked snakes called Democrats were in power. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why. So there you go. Mm. They are a fulfillment of the apostate uh, conditions that you always see. We saw it in Israel. Jeremiah 9.5. Talking about the apostates in Israel. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. Man, if that is the, should be the, the masthead for CNN and MSNBC. They will deceive everyone as neighbor and will not speak the truth. That's right. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. You know how they do that? Those talking heads on CNN, MSNBC, and your local affiliate ABC, NBC, T CBS, and the national ABC, CBS, NBC, they, they teach themselves to speak lies because all they do is read that teleprompter. And whatever that thing tells them to say, they say it, and it's lie after lie after lie. Yeah, Doug? They want to get rid of the uh, Bill of Rights along with the Constitution because it, because it, protects, it protects the citizens from, from the cradle to the grave. They want to get rid of that. Yeah. So they can kill you. That's why... I got this little thing, the Bill of Rights. Put, we're going to put it downstairs <laughs> as a permanent decoration downstairs. Uh, found a nice little, it's a, it wasn't very expensive, but it's actually, you know, it's not paper. It's going to last a while. Nice. And then we've got the Constitution, pocket constitutions, free of charge. Take them, give them away to people if, they, if you think they'll keep them reading. Finally, it says, and they weary themselves to commit iniquity. And you watch, they weary themselves. They spend their 
free time, their money, their energy to try to legalize all of their wickedness. And pedophilia is next. They're trying to lower the age of consent. And there's a law in California that they put forward so that if you are less than 10 years older than a child uh, over the age of, I think, 10, then the penalties for sex with that child are minimized. Democrats. And I'm so sick of hearing everybody say, it doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican. There are some wicked Republicans, I'll grant you that, but the Democrat Party is a Nazi party. And you need to go back and learn history. What the Nazis did to Germany, the liberal Democrats will do to America if we'll lay down and let them. And then after the rapture, they can have it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's open up the word of prayer before we get in our Bible study. Father, we thank you, Lord, for helping us to discern the times. And it's not only in politics, but as we're about to see, it's going on in religion. It's going on among evangelicals and fundamental <coughs> ministries. And uh, we're just going to scratch the surface tonight with a little prophecy update on uh, the great evangelical apostasy as far as it has gone as of 2019. Lord, we, I pray that myself and everyone here and those who are part of this ministry, whether they're local or one of the other United States or one of the other countries around the world, that you will give them the boldness, that they will be willing to stand and that they'll be willing to speak out to confront these Christian leaders who themselves are as wicked as the devil sometimes. And Lord, uh, give us all that courage. We love you. And we love you enough to be hated by the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. This is... Uh, Great Evangelical Apostasy 2019. It is the greatest sign of the times. If you want to know one of the greatest signs that you can see that the Antichrist is very close to appearing and the tribulation period is very close to being sparked, then uh, you look at the apostasy taking place. And... It's not a pleasant task, but it's a necessary task if I am to honor my calling as your pastor. It's just the reality. Look over at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Apostasy simply means uh, to fall away from your original position. The original position of Christianity was that we had a book that is infallible, a book that is our final authority. Well, now, most professing Christians don't have a book. Mm -hmm. They believe that the uh, originals, which no one can see, no one can read, no one can touch, and even if, the, even if they had them in their possession, uh, less than 0.01% of Christians on planet Earth could read them because they're in Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> But that's what, if you look at the state of the face of a lot of these ministries and these churches, they believe in the Word of God, they'll say, but it's something that you can't see. It's a great mysticism. We believe a book that I can hand to you. You can hold in your hands. And if these guys, these guys out here that say this stuff about the originals, they, if they hand you a Bible and claim that they're handing you the infallible Word of God, you're dealing with a liar. They can't give you an NIV and tell you that they believe that's the infallible word of God because they don't believe that. And they can't even give you a King James because they don't believe it's infallible. You understand? I mean, that's something you got to get. You turn on some guy on the TV or the radio or the internet and he waves his Bible around and says, Oh, we believe this is the word of God. Then you find out he doesn't believe anything of the sort. He believes that there was a Bible in Greek and Hebrew and the originals. And what we have now are copies in Hebrew and Greek that have transcribed errors and all sorts of issues. 
And they're not translated perfectly, so there's no such thing as a perfect translation. That's what almost all the seminaries in this country teach right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll say stuff like that, but they don't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's meaning. The words, the words are all different. So. Yeah, the words are different. But the meanings are different. <laughs> all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It doesn't say all the meanings of the Scripture. Amen? Amen? So look at John 10, and that's the difference between uh, a good preacher and a bad preacher, is that uh, he wants you to have the truth, and he wants you to believe the Word of God, and verse uh, 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Jesus says, I am come that they may have life, and they might have it more abundantly. He says, uh, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now read verses 12 and 13 with me. But he, he that is an hireling, and, and not, not the shepherd, shepherd whose own the, own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. So what you're getting tonight, and you get it in, um, you know, small portions during a lot of our studies, but tonight you're getting one full study on your under shepherd, under the great shepherd, giving you some warning about the wolves. Now, a lot of churches, you will go forever and not be warned. Yep. Even among some fundamentalist preachers and King James Bible preachers, they're so scared to death to name names. They don't want you to, you know, they don't want to offend anybody. Well, listen, it's just like the Billy Graham thing. Uh, you know, we've had people claim they didn't come to church here because we talk bad about Billy Graham. I don't talk bad about Billy Graham. I tell you the truth about Billy Graham. Billy Graham got on TV and said Jesus is not the only way to heaven. I got news for everybody in this room. You ever get on TV and tell the world that Jesus is not the only way to heaven? I'm going to rebuke you. And I'll rebuke Billy Graham. He's nothing to, to me. The Word of God is what's important. Amen. Billy's not my God, never was, never will be. And it's just crazy how people get, man, the way they think. Billy Graham is not my God. And if Billy Graham says something against the Word of God, I'm going to rebuke him. Get over your idol worship. Amen? Amen. I mean, a lot of these evangelicals ought to have a little Billy Graham bobblehead. <laughs> you know? And when they pray, they should sit that bobblehead right in front of them and just pray, looking right at Billy. I'm telling you, that's how bad they are. That's... He's dead. He's been dead a little while. It'd probably get a little less intense down the road. That's the way it's been. And I've, you know, I've mentioned other preachers at times. And I mean, I'll get, I got, we put a video out there where Catherine Coleman, you remember Catherine Coleman, anybody? Yeah. She was a false prophetess, a crook. And she, one of the things she got out there and said was that, that this is back in like 1974, 73. I was like four or five years old. And she says, this generation is the final youth generation. And she declared that the generation of youth in 1973 would be the last youth generation before Jesus came back. Now, I was four years old at the time. I'm pushing 50. <laughs> and there have been more youth generations come since then. She's a false prophetess. But I've got it on video out there, and people will even hear her say it and still defend her. It's just amazing. People, there's some people out there who love lies. And I'm sorry, this ain't the place for you. I mean, I'm just sorry. This is never going to be, you're never going to be comfortable here. Now, the word is discernment. Almost completely lacking among Christians today. You talk to Christians and, and they're unable to discern. And some of the, I've had people I thought had sense. And it happened to me one time. I was sitting there talking to somebody and uh, the preacher preached a real good sermon and we stand in church. You know, it's an independent, fundamental Baptist church. And this lady says, my favorite preacher is T.D. Jackson. Uh -oh. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> 
I said, wait, you're serious? <laughs> she was serious. I, I'm going to close my eyes just for a second and say this so no one thinks I'm... If you think T.D. Jakes is a real preacher, you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, you've got nothing. He wipes the sweat for you at all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that's preaching, you've got to be as dumb as the wood that makes this pulpit to think that man is a real preacher. You just have to see him on TV. He's all over the place. You'll and have to have your kids Google it for you. He's a, he's a big black guy. He's, he's denied the Trinity. He's denied the eternal security. He denies the King James Bible. He's He's an uh, Obama supporter who despises Donald Trump. Emotions. I mean, on and on it goes. Uh, emotions all he, he had this woman thou art loose stuff that all the women who, you know, silly women laden with sin, as Paul talked about, them all bought his books. And, you know, he'd get out there and get them all riled up at his conferences. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You know, that kind of thing. And he has a net worth of $147 million. There you go. That's what he is. <laughs> T.D. Jakes is a hireling. Really. He doesn't preach the truth. And he doesn't warn anybody about wolves or error because he's making merchandise of people and they're just that stupid. And that word discernment, it's lacking among believers today. Yep. Now, um, here's what, I just found this little cartoon. It's kind of what I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to Christians, but this is a cop, okay? And the cop's looking down and he says, uh, it looks like the victim was uh, brutally sliced into multiple pieces. <laughs> and then the guy behind him says, uh, it's over here, Sarge. <laughs> He's looking, looking at a hot Scotch chalk outline. And that's about how, you know, the, the level of discernment among Christians these days is about right there. That's a good representation of it. So the Bible calls the end times perilous times, and I believe they are upon us. And that explains a lot of what we're experiencing. Look over 2 Timothy chapter 3. Perilous means confusing. Doesn't perilous mean confusing? I thought it meant dangerous. Yes. It's, well, it's a chaotic and dangerous. The idea of chaotic and dangerous, yeah. Yeah, when they come from the word peril. Peril, yeah, that's right. That's that's one good way of uh, getting definitions from words is look at the root. Amen. Second <laughs> Timothy three. Anybody here doesn't think we're in the last days? Okay. Well, it doesn't. Know. It doesn't. You don't have to preach that sermon. I believe we're in the night two oh, hours. Amen. Right He's talking about baseball for yeah, some reason. Right. Oh. You English types. Just like, I mean, baseball. <laughs> hey, baseball is a good example of what's going on today. Did you see what they did to Kate Smith? Yeah. New York Yankees. No longer going to use her rendition of God Bless America because sometime about 80 years ago, she sang a song that they said that they thought was racist. <laughs> Kate Smith, I think Byron Smith was saying this, and I might get the number wrong, but I know it's into the millions. I think he said something like sixty million dollars she raised war bonds. Yep. Um, that's the thanks her country in these idiot times we live in give her is to shame her, remove her. The Philadelphia Flyers are doing it too. There's even a statue they've covered it up with tarp. I mean, just think about how stupid these people are. Stupid. No, I mean, if you get mad at me, I don't care if you get mad at me. They're libtards. That's what they are. <laughs> That's the right yeah, word for those people. Amen. Yeah. It's like Bring me a liberal and let me tell them. They need to be told they're libtards. Amen. These people are just disgustingly stupid. <laughs> and what they're doing to our country, it's just, they are, they have, it's a lot to do. The old preachers used to preach a lot of sermons on liberals. You go back and listen to the old preachers, the old, go get the cassette tape sermons. Mm -hmm. And they'll preach on liberals. Mm -hmm. J. Frank Norris, this is back in the time of World War II, and J. Frank Norris uh, got in trouble. He was a Southern Baptist at this time, and he got in trouble because he called them all snakes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I think, man, that's tame. 
<coughs> they are like their father, the devil, the serpent. Mm -hmm. So verse 1 in 2 Timothy 3, read that with me. This it's know also that, that in, in the, the last days, days perilous, perilous times time shall come. come. Now, I have to stop there and say, um, it's getting bad, but we ain't seen nothing yet. Yep. <laughs> this is a solid. Cheer up. The longer, <laughs> yes. Cheer up. The worst is yet to come. <laughs> and the longer the Lord tarries, the more we get to see it. And as soon as that rapture happens, yeah. man, it's going to get ugly. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now, doesn't that sound like what we're seeing today? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, verse 3, without natural, natural affection. affection. Now, I think that goes down for women who will kill their own babies. That's right. Mm -hmm. It also goes down for men who want to have sex with other men and women who want to have sex with other women and all these people having sex with animals. Yeah. And if you didn't know that's a thing, it's a thing. And bestiality and pedi pedophilia is next on the LGBT agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. Like, here you are. This is this is where you fit in. Despisers of those that are good. Yeah. You, you live as a good Christian, they're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. You take a stand for morality, what's good. Now, you can be a good Christian, in quotes, mm -hmm. and tell everybody that God is love. And so we should just love everybody, even if they love an animal. Mm -hmm. Or a man loves a man, or a woman loves a woman. God is love. Now, that kind of Christian they like. Mm -hmm. But the real one, the kind that goes with the Bible, those that are good in the sense of Scripture, they despise you. Despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, read that. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers, lovers of God. God. And uh, there again describes our generation. Self Magazine, uh, I remember you know, it came out years ago, some of these preachers about it. <laughs> Fit, and man, they didn't see what we're seeing. Uh, verse 5, read that. Having a, a form, form of godliness, of godliness but, but denying, denying the power thereof. thereof. From, from such, such turn, turn away. away. Now that's the hard part. But that's Bible. When you got your your best friend, your co-worker, family member, um, somebody say your kids, I heard old me. You got kids that turn on God and embrace this stuff. Jesus said, if you don't love me so much that you're willing to forsake your own mother, then you're not fit to be my disciple. If you think your love for your children comes above your obedience to the word of Jesus Christ, you're backslidden right now. Mm -hmm. Right this second. Before it even comes down to the you know, point you have to do it. And I got a couple who would sit right there in the pew and hear me say, that I don't care if it was my own mother, my brother, my sister, my grandmother, my, my own father, my own children. You turn on Jesus Christ, you're turning on me too because I'm not going with you. Amen. Amen. Well, here's the thing. Just as Christmas decorations tell us that Thanksgiving is near, I had somebody, I'll tell you this in a second. Okay. So signs of the tribulation or Daniel's 70th week tell us that the rapture is near. Yeah. <laughs> I've mentioned that a few times through the years and some of you probably heard it, heard me say it and some other preachers may have said it too. But uh, last year, uh, somebody I, I don't even know uh, sent me a note out of the blue and just saying, I just got the biggest kick. She goes, I was walking in the store and I see Christmas decorations, and you know what the first thing I thought was? I need to get a turkey. 
<laughs> and she said, I just remembered how you said when you see Christmas decorations, you know Thanksgiving getting near. And I saw Christmas decorations. I thought, i got to get a turkey because I've got Thanksgiving coming. <laughs> see how that works? Yeah, wow. See, you'll hear preachers even get a little too, they'll go overboard with this. They'll say, there's no signs for the rapture. Well, that's true technically. But every sign you see that says the Antichrist is about to take over and the tribulation is about to, to hit the fan that the one world order and the one world money system, the mark of the beast and the one world religion, the Sodomite revival, Jesus said it would be as it was in the days of Lot. You see any of that stuff going on and you're like, the rapture's got to be close. Amen. Yeah, it is close. <laughs> and what is a sign? If we think that the a sign of the 70th week of Daniel tells us the rapture's near. Look at 2 Thessalonians, just a few pages to your left. Chapter 2, verse 3. This is one of the, I believe this is the major sign. People said Israel is the signpost. And that was true for the in the general sense that we know we're in the last days. Israel being regathered in the land. But as far as the kicking in of the Antichrist world religion and all that, look at verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Read that with me. Let, Let no man, man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that and man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So that day, I believe, is a reference to the day of the Lord. And I believe it's in reference to uh, all the seals and the trumpets and the vials and goes all the way through the millennium. That's what I believe the day of the Lord is. Now, that day will not come except first there's a great falling away. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, this is the great falling away. The moment after the rapture takes place, there will be absolutely no saints on the entire planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, it's getting scarce, but there's still millions and millions. Planet of 7.5 billion could be as many as a billion saints. A lot of people put the number around 500 million. Some people put as little as 200 million, but that's still a lot of people, 200 million. The moment after the rapture, zero. Not a saint on the planet. Think of that. That's the great falling away. There'll be, that, you can't get any more falling away than that. There's no faith on the earth at that moment. And then what happens next? The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. That's right. So this great falling away is preceded by a growing apostasy as we see today. You see, when the rapture takes place, they're not going to be convinced that it was a bunch of Bible-believing born-again Christians going up in the rapture. They're going to have a strong delusion, and one of the things that's going to help that is that a lot of the churches, this includes evangelical and fundamental churches, are still going to have their pastor and a good portion of their membership sitting yep. in the pew. Yep. yep. <laughs> and how's that happening today? Because they're preaching a false gospel. A lot of times they only preach the gospel they do not call on you to repent and believe the gospel. They just say, would you like to go to heaven? Yes, well, then say this prayer. And they do. doesn't have anything to do with biblical salvation. Never did Jesus the apostles just walk up to somebody and say, hey, would you like some fire insurance? <laughs> and that's how it's being preached today. No, when you preach the gospel, you, when you go to an unsaved person, first you present the gospel. How that Christ died for our sins and he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Then you confront them with the fact they're a sinner and they need to be saved. And you call on them to repent and believe the gospel. That's not being done. Folks, it ain't, hasn't been done in some churches for years. So they've packed their pews full of unsaved, eternally secure Baptists. You can't talk them out of their salvation. They're eternally secure. But they've never been born again. And that's why you see fundamental churches and evangelical churches going into Sodom. People are like, how is this happening? It's because there's a bunch of unsaved people making the decisions. When the pastor gets old and retires or leaves, who do they bring in? They bring in some hireling. They don't bring in a Bible 
believing, fire breathing, you know, Baptist preacher, they bring in some hireling who will run the church like it's a franchise. And all he wants is to bring in more people and have more money so they can build more buildings and, you know. <laughs> amen. Amen. This is just, this. I can show you story, a story like this every week. At least one. This is a story out of the UK, a BBC poll. Fewer than half of UK Christians believe Jesus died and rose again for their forgiveness of sins. Let that sink in. That's half of the Christians. You just take the Christians, and that's about half of the population claims to be a Christian in the UK. But you take just the Christian, professing Christians in the United Kingdom, and fewer than half. So here's what it's saying. According to this poll, more than half of the professing Christians in the UK are going to hell. Amen. You cannot be saved. You cannot be a Christian if you don't believe the gospel. Amen. Then there's papal ecumenism. The ecumenical movement under the Pope. This, will, this is the great apostasy, the great falling away taking place before your eyes. You just turn on the TV, look it up on the internet, see the news, and you'll see it. And it will bring all religions together to eventually unify under the Antichrist, who is whoever that final pope is, will be the Antichrist. Now, um, the 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 thing, one of the main things you see right now is what's thing called Chrismal. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that Chrismal? Mm -hmm. And that's where they're taking Catholic Christianity and Islam and bringing them together. Not too long ago, the leader of the largest Muslim a community on planet Earth signed an agreement with the Pope, virtually bringing that two, those two together. So, in some ways, Chrislam is already a reality, and this is what that's setting the stage for in Revelation thirteen eight. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Pope is setting that up right now. He's laying the groundwork. Now, he went to India preaching this stuff, and now he's inspired. You got Chrislam, Catholic Christianity, Islam. Now you got the Buddhists and the Hindus. He's, he's inspired India's religions to plot peace, and what they mean is coming together with the Pope. Muslims and Christians in India are working to popularize a document on human fraternity released during Pope Francis' historic visit to the United Arab Emirates in February, just a couple months ago. The document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, that's what the document's called, focuses on religious tolerance, cross-faith dialogue, and world peace. They won't tolerate me <laughs> if I go over there and meet with those people and preach that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and you must be born again, repenting toward God and believing how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ alone as payment for your sin, they will not tolerate me. They will only tolerate those who won't preach that. You can preach anything else you want. Uh, one of this uh, Del Del High Minority Co Commission Chair, a guy named Khan is his last name. He says, "quote It talks about brotherhood, love, peace, <laughs> women's and children's rights, and the futil futility of war and terrorism. It contains words of wisdom from the highest level." And uh, he says, however, very few people know about it, so we want to give it more pub publicity. So now there's a big push on it. Perfect name, Con. Con, yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Ooh, right. Now think of this. The Pope, when he goes around to these other religions, he does not spend his time preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He spends his time orchestrating the eventual one world antichrist religion. That's what you're... Francis, Pope Francis, does almost all his efforts, all of his time is spent laying the groundwork for the Antichrist world religion. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, 
this is encroaching into churches that used to take a strong stand against this stuff. And uh, one of the major ways is the charismatic movement. Going back to the 60s, the charismatics got hooked in with the Catholics. And you could actually go to Catholic churches where they'd have, not during mass, but in special services, and they'd all get together and speak in tongues and everything. You'd have nuns and priests and other people all speaking in tongues and singing their 7-Eleven music, you know, <laughs> and, and having a good old time. And so that's crept into a lot of other churches, who Southern Baptist churches and, and other non-Pentecostal churches. And once trustworthy ministries are going charismatic, ecumenical, and making merchandise, look at 2 Peter chapter 2. Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. I'll begin reading verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. And there are, amen? Mm -hmm. Who privily, meaning that secretly, they'll bring it in with stealth. They won't come through the front door. They'll come in underneath the radar who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now read verses two and three. And, and many, many shall follow their, their pernicious ways, ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their, and their damnation, damnation slumber right not. That's going on among Christian churches and ministries today, and it is rampant. I mean, it's just all over the place. I hate to say this, but Southwest Radio Church, Brother Noah went to be with the Lord, and that ministry is going into the pit. I can no longer recommend it as sound Bible teaching ministry, and I'll just give you one clear example, and that's the most recent offering by Southwest Radio. They interviewed this guy and offered his book called The Veil, An Invitation to the Unseen Realm. Blake K. Healy. And this is from the back cover of that book. Quote, For as long as he can remember, Blake K. Healy has seen angels and demons. He sees them as clearly as he would see you if you were standing right in front of him. He sees angels dancing in worship services and whispering words of encouragement in people's ears. He also sees demons latching on to people and perpetuating addiction and bitterness in their hearts. Ooh. Does that make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, get a little goose pimple here? This is a fictitious book, right? No. <laughs> the Veil is the name of the book, chronicles how Blake matured in this gifting. And here's my main problem with it. While overcoming the fear and confusion of what he saw, how he learned to use his gift of seeing, that's what he calls it, for God's glory, and how to teach others to do the same. Wow. Southwest Radio Church is offering a book put out by a cult. It's called the Bethel Cult. The main headquarters is out in California. This guy is in Atlanta. This cult is dangerous. The discernment ministries have been warning about the Bethel Cult for years. The new apostolic reformation and all this garbage. And now that book is supposed to teach you how to start seeing angels and demons everywhere. No, thank you. What? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Listen, folks, I love I love y'all. I love uh, you folks who come on Sunday and aren't here or whatever. I love y'all. The last thing I need is for you to come in here thinking you're seeing demons and angels everywhere. We have enough issues. Amen? <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, and that is just absolutely sickening to me. It is. And it's under Larry Spargimino's leadership that SWRC is watering down their stand on LGBT while embracing charismatic heresy. Jenny and I gave up on them. Uh, Noah was in his last year or two. 
He was uh, in bad health. I had a conversation with him on the phone, and he told me that he, he was basically not making any decisions any longer. It was out of his hands. Uh, he had wanted me to be on the radio program and was going to offer the new versions or Vatican versions DVD. And uh, Jenny will remember when all that went on. Yeah. And somebody there cut me off. Somebody there didn't want me on. And Noah, when we went down to see him in Bristol, um, told me to give him a call, and I did, and we talked for a little while. <coughs> and uh, I could, what he said, what he didn't say, I could tell Noah was not happy with the direction of Southwest Radio Church Ministries. And that's why if you go back and listen to the studies from about 2012 on, I didn't promote Southwest Radio Church anymore. At Bristol, we had to sit there and listen to Larry Spargimino lecture us, basically blaming us for the fact that there aren't a lot of queers getting saved. Now, John 3.19 says that this is the condemnation. It doesn't say because Christians didn't do enough to reach them. It says this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I sat there and listened to a promise keepers black preacher try to blame all of us white people who showed up for the promise keepers because there wasn't very many black people there. And I got up and walked out because we tried, we went door to door in black neighborhoods. We, they sent uh, materials. They advertised on black radio. They got, went into black churches and tried to get the men to show up. None of them showed up. So if you want to get up there and preach the truth, you blame the black men in this country for being apostate. Blame the black men of America for what they're doing to the black young men in America. I'm sick of this bootlicking blacks in America. Black culture is suffering because of black people. And the same thing's true when it comes to the queers. They're going to hell because they love being queer. They don't want to repent of their wicked sin. Don't come blaming me. And I had to sit there and listen to Sparge Amino lecture us on that. And Jenny will tell you, if some of you think I can't behave, I sat right there and just bit my tongue. And he told us, you know, one of the things we need to stop doing is saying that God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I ain't going to stop saying that. <laughs> God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen. But you know what was crazy about that? Adam and Eve, too, yeah. Yeah, Adam and Eve. <laughs> right. You know what's so crazy about that? Noah Hutchings uttered those words many, many times. That's right. That's right. He said that right while he was there. And Noah was sitting right there when Larry was lecturing us about it. But that's when Noah told me later on the phone, it's pretty much out of his hands. Now, real quick, I got to tell you what's going on. The voice of the martyrs, I think I spelled it wrong. There's an E in there. It should be wrong. Mm -hmm. But I can no longer re recommend them as a trusted mission organization. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago. They've become ecumenical. Um, they compromise the gospel message they preach. They um, have unethical leadership. Uh, Tom White, who replaced Richard Wormbrand, was a child molester. And when they were going to, uh, he was the head of Voice of Martyrs for like 20 years. When they were going to arrest him, he committed suicide. Well, Richard Wormbrand's son, Michael, called on Voice of the Martyrs to have an investigation so that if Tom molested more than just one girl, they could find out. Voice of the Martyrs killed it. They didn't want an investigation. And then they replaced Tom White with a politician. The mayor of, I think it's called Bartlettsville, Oklahoma. Guy with no Christian ministry experience or anything. This is uh, from Michael, a report. He says, since pedophiles rarely, or I'm sorry, the leadership of Voice of the Martyrs USA lacks legitimacy. Richard, Richard Wolfbrand retired in 1992 and died in 2001. His successor, Tom White, was a pedophile who committed suicide in 2012 at the Voice of the Martyrs compound when the police were about to arrest him for having sexually abused a 10-year-old girl. Wow. 
Since pedophiles rarely abuse only one child, Michael Wormbrand, uh, the only child of Richard and um, Sabina, I thought it was her name, Sabine Wormbrand, um, who had been serving Voice of the Martyrs from California, he called for an independent investigation to assure that Tom White hadn't abused other children during his frequent trips to Voice of the Martyrs facilities, including orphanages abroad. In response, Voice of the Martyrs fired Richard Wormbrand's son, Michael. Now he's uh, in his 70s, who had co-founded Voice of the Martyrs with his parents, and they offered him money to shut him up. Michael Wormbrand rejected the money and instead published an open letter that repeats his call for an independent investigation and asked donors to stop supporting Voice of the Martyrs, and we certainly have. The current president of Voice of the Martyrs USA is the former mayor of Bartlettsville, uh, Bartlesville, okay. <laughs> Small town in which Voice of the Martyrs is located, their USA headquarters. It was hired by Voice of the Martyrs despite not having any ministry experience, et cetera. And then on top of all that is this horrible, wasteful spending. They had a headquarters that was a building of about $500,000. They took the money sent to them to help persecuted Christians and build a $28 million headquarters. $28 million. Imagine, as the caption says, what the thousands of individuals, thousands of underground churches, etc., that could have been helped with that money, as was intended by the donors. Another one, Gospel for Asia. And also no longer be recommended as a trusted mission organization. And folks, don't let this depress you. Jesus said this would happen. All we're doing right now is detailing how that Jesus was right. Amen. As sad as it is, Amen. Gospel for Asia also has become very ecumenical. They also are preaching a compromised gospel. They also have cultic leadership. In India, K.P. Yohanan, you remember him? How many of you remember him? He's the guy who founded Gospel for Asia. His highest degree earned is a bachelor's degree, but he's now given himself the title. And this is funny because I joke about this all the time. <laughs> See, he wants you to call him this. His eminence, most reverend, Dr. K.P. Yohanan, the Metropolitan Bishop of the Believer's Church. <laughs> and I've joked about calling me the most right-wing reverend or right-wing bishop. bishop. Yeah. Get it most right-wing right bishop of Worthington. Yes. Oh. I did have somebody one time rebuke me because they thought I was serious. <laughs> and I was like, You've got to be kidding me. That's a joke, okay? <laughs> this guy, this guy, he's serious. You want to see what he looks like? Oh, my God. Oh, you're kidding me. Wow. Oh, nice getup. Looks like a guy that got to his uniform from Columbus, Tenth Nottingham. He looks like the Pope, so he looks like. He does. Yep. And that guy there, I, I think one of those guys, I can't remember which one they said, is being ordained. They have to swear allegiance to him nice. to be ordained to and he sits there like the pope his eminence most reverend doctor K.P. Yohannan the metropolitan bishop of the believers church <laughs> and of course you, you, you knew this was coming but it was wasteful spending much of the money that was uh, the gospel for Asia transferred to South Asia was not used for their stated purposes some of it was used to buy for profit Enterprises. Instead of giving money to Christians and churches and building churches and all that, they bought a $70 million engineering college. That's what I would do. Bought a $19 million rubber plantation. Of course. And a professional soccer team. Entertainment. Because nothing sa says serving the Lord like a soccer team. Some of it was used to finance the growth of K.P. Yohannan's Believer's Church, while some of it remains unaccounted for. Of 
But when pressed during a belated 2015 Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability inquiry, Gospel for Asia conceded that in June of 2015, the bank accounts of its offices in Asia held a collective balance of $186 million. Wow. They weren't spending it on anybody but themselves. Yeah. Yep. And that something happened because it was up to $259 million the year before. Wow. So the ECFA revoked Gospel for Asia's membership in late 2015. Drum roll, please. Woohoo! They built a $45 million <coughs> headquarters. Of course. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's pretty. I know. I'm going to help them now. I mean, all they need is a little bit bigger tower and some, um, you know, characters running around with fireworks, and they look like Disney. <laughs> but again, imagine what all this money could have gone to do. I bet General Motors made good money off of them, too. You know what? Uh, somebody mentioned today, and it's true. When you see these people with their heresies and their waste of money, there's usually, just like with Tom White at Voice of Mars, there's usually some sex involved. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And so you just kind of sit back and wait and to hear what kind of other things are gonna come out. We could go on and on like this all night. Um, dishonorable <laughs> mentions, we can only mention warnings about a few other organizations. Um, Bible League, about one third of what you give to the Bible League goes toward fundraising <laughs> and that's in the millions of dollars they use corrupt text to make their bibles that they supposedly give away and they even have gender neutral translations now Ooh. in foreign languages not just infecting americans but infecting foreigners around the world why wycliffe translators how many of you heard of them wycliffe translators they use the corrupt text as well they also put out pro-islamic translations for places that are muslim Here's, this, listen to this, this is crazy. To make the Bible friendly to Muslims who deny the Trinity, Wycliffe Bible Transla Translators, SIL Translation Project, and by the way, uh, David W. Daniels of Chick Tracks work for them and can confirm this stuff. But uh, they have removed references to God the Father as Father and to Jesus as the Son or Son of God. God the Father is being translated as Allah. That's Sometimes they'll call him guardian or great protector. The son of God is now translated as representative of God. <laughs> Beloved one from God or Messiah of God, which aligns with the Quran's Isa al-Masa, which is what they call Jesus the Messiah. Here's an example. An example. Uh, Matthew 28, 19, we, we know, says, Go ye therefore and... Um, Teach and preach and baptize them in the name of the Father and all the good. They translate it, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, cleansing them by water in the name of Allah. Oh, yeah. You give money to Wycliffe translators, that's the Bibles they're printing for Muslims. And they are in cooperation with and assistance to the Vatican. And they also have a wasteful budget. This is the salary of the top six people at Wycliffe Translators, the senior consultant to the president makes 258,000 plus a year. The senior resource and development, 158,000. The VP of marketing, 129,000. The treasurer, 116,000. The president makes 135,000 and uh, the chief HR officer, 119,000. That was five years ago. So who knows what it's like now. Just do the math. That's almost, it's basically a million dollars just to pay those people. <laughs> One more thing. Um, time prohibits discussion of the no repentance of sin that's producing the apostasy. The purpose driven apostasy from Rick Warren out in uh, California. Hillsong apostasy. They're now accommodating Sodom, and it won't be long before they'll have them preaching and everything in Hillsong. That's the big Australian, and they got Hillsong United, the music and all that. Youth with a Mission used to be a big thing. Kids would take trips and everything. They're now 
um, ecumenical and all that and wasting money and all that. And then they, they're denying the, uh, the gospel. They're even saying that preaching that Jesus paid for our sins is, is a uh, corruption of the true gospel. It's just weird. It's just crazy. It's almost impossible to keep up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to close with this reading. 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. I'll begin by reading verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Verse 2, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, this is to you Christians still here before the rapture. Verse 4, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Read verses 5 through 11 with me. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for in helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Amen. And we don't stand there like the Pharisees and say, well, Lord, I'm just thankful I'm not like them. <laughs> um, what we say is, but for the grace of God, go there I, go there you. But we can thank the Lord that we have this King James Bible. And that any of us will take time to read it, study it, and learn it. And the more you read and learn and study it, the more discernment you're going to have. The better you will be able to view what's going on around you and understand what's going on. And there's going to be times where you're going to see things and you're going to have to take a stand. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the Holy Spirit being saved, born again, you have the Spirit of God in you. And He can lead you and help you. Just a couple of minutes for questions. Q&A if anybody has any. Jenny. I was curious if you happened to study Alana recently. Like if you know anything about it or like if it came up in your study. There have been some Compromise, but nothing major, as far as I can see. Okay. Um, she's asking about a wano. Approved workmen Sorry, need not, not to be ashamed. Yes. Oh. Approved workmen are not ashamed. A wano. That's what it stands for. And uh, to kind of a uh, Bible scouts <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of club. Because we did do some, you can do some camping and stuff like that, but they meet every week and they have a memorization of the Bible. But they switched um, to the New King James. And um, they, they have let let down the standards and let some groups come in and start having a lot of clubs that aren't sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. So there's been some compromise, but not to the degree that we saw tonight, thankfully. So. Okay. Yeah. Kim? What about R.C. Sproul? He's dead. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, you mean his, like his ministry? Ligonier? Ligonier? Some good things and bad things about R.C. Sproul's ministry. Um, they're Calvinists, so... A lot of their doctrine is uh, messed up. <clears throat> um, his son got in a lot of trouble and, and caused some shame and, and everything, <coughs> drunkenness, that kind of thing. But um, it's public, so I'm not telling you rumors or gossip. It's, it was in the news. Um, moral On moral issues like abortion and that sort of thing, R.C. Sproul put out some videos, and they were instrumental in helping people. Um, in that way, but um, their doctrine is reformed. They deny the dispensations. They don't believe in the rapture. And sadly, R.C. Sproul was very anti-Israel, mm. and he signed his name to a document called the Knox Theological um, Statement on Israel years ago, back when D. James Kennedy was still alive. And it was basically saying that Israel is not a fulfillment of prophecy, and that you know, having a United States government. Uh, Developed their foreign policy based on the idea that Israel was our was was God's fulfillment of prophecy it was a dangerous idea and all this stuff. So, so there's some bad stuff there. On the bright side, there's been some good things. Uh, Albert Muller and another guy I can't remember his name, 
they were involved with it and they were pushing them in the direction of like social justice and all this stuff and they gave them the boot. So they're holding firm on not getting involved in the uh, ecumenical movement and stuff like that. But I don't recommend Ligonier. Um, uh, I had a real bad experience back in 1991 or two. I called in, just asked for uh, some material and, and, um, and asked a question and uh, a fellow started talking to me and, uh, and I, he started pushing his hardcore Calvinism and I told him I didn't believe that you know, people are elected to heaven and some are damned to hell and it was all just by, all just by God's choice. I believe it's a matter of you whether you respond to the gospel. And he basically told me I wasn't even saved. <laughs> oh, <laughs> One of their workers down there. Too bad. So that was my first uh, Ligonier experience with R.C. Schools Ministry. And since then, there's just been enough that I've stayed away from re recommending them. They use the new versions and everything, too. So a lot of their material is just uh, pretty out there. Anybody else? Go once. Go twice. Charlie's yawning, so it's time to go. <laughs> Won't you stand? <laughs> we'll have Charlie close in prayer. <laughs> Dear Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day. And uh, we thank you for just uh, blessing us all with the strength to get up and do what we need to do today. Uh, we thank you for uh, the ability to discern through the Holy Spirit, that we can see what's going on in the world. And thank you, Greg, just to bring to our attention things that are important going on in the world today. And pray that you would uh, bless and protect each person here as we continue to go about our week and just help us to be about your business every day. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I just messed with Charlie. Our working man. All right, timeliners. Well, sure. Well, see you guys later. We love you. Bye. Oh, there's, there's Janie. Mom, want to say hi? Oh, sorry, Janie. Kind of cut you off. All right, you can continue waving now, Janie, if you wanted to. Bye. There we go. <laughs>